Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm taking a look at Melty Blood, Actress Again. This game actually had three different developers work on it. Type Moon, French Bread, and E. Cole Software. It was originally released in arcades in 2008, and on the PlayStation 2 in 2009, and it's just one in a long line of games that started as self-published visual novels that were first sold at Kamaket, the biannual doujinshi convention in Tokyo. See my review of Comic Party for more details. The Melty Blood series is actually a follow-up to the adult visual novel called Tsukihime, which itself was adapted into a series of manga and anime. I've never played any of the visual novels in the series, and I don't really feel like I need to, because it works just fine as a 2D fighter. The plot in Actress Again is honestly a little over my head. If I'm not mistaken, it's continuing a story that was started some 10 years before at the time of its release, with four games in between. I can tell you that vampires play a big role in this universe. Some are evil and some are good, even trying to find a cure for their vampirism. Also, there are robot maids, tiny little robot cat people, and the final boss is a woman with a giant robot looking thing named the Dust of Osiris. So I'm saying this game is very dense. There are 25 selectable characters to choose from, and each one has their own story arc that's played out over the nine battles in the arcade mode. Again, the plot here is a bit convoluted and lost on me, but that's not a big deal. This is a fighting game after all, and I don't really need a whole lot of reasoning behind why the characters are fighting. And speaking of, the fighting in Melty Blood is amazing. This is some of the smoothest gameplay I've experienced in a fighting game in a long time. The basic controls are rather simple. You have three attack buttons, light, medium, and heavy, and an EX shielding button, which is a power block that can give you a brief chance to counterattack if successful, but you have to time your button press correctly. Otherwise, you'll leave yourself vulnerable to more attacks, so it's a risk-reward kind of thing. All of the characters have the same basic setup for special moves, quarter circles, and sure you can button presses, but the moves change slightly depending on which attack button you press. If you have at least 100% on your super move meter, which can go up to 300%, you can perform a super move by simply executing a normal special move and pressing the heavy attack button. And if you reach 300%, you'll be able to execute multiple super moves before your meter goes back down to 200. You can also use your meter to enter heat mode, which gives you a bit of a stat boost for a short period, and is ended immediately if a super move is performed. Actress Again also features three different fighting modes for each character, which is based on the different phases of the moon. I tend to stick with the Crescent Moon style as it's the simplest and pretty much carries over the gameplay from the previous game called Act Cadenza, which I had already played. You can also select Half Moon and Full Moon modes, which change the characters' move sets a bit and even apply some changes to their health and super move meters. There are lots of possibilities for some really long combos and air juggles in Actress Again which typically aren't all that difficult to pull off thanks to the game's super smooth controls. You can also perform ground and air recoveries, which are very useful and allow you to quickly get your momentum back after suffering an attack. And though the characters all share the same basic control scheme, each one still remains unique enough that it's worth trying them all and finding the one that's right for you. Overall, I find the gameplay and actress again to be simply exquisite. It's a whole lot of fun, and I keep coming back to it time and time again. 
And I'd personally rank it among some of my other favorites, like Guilty Gear. This is also a game that features some really nice presentation. The graphics aren't exactly going to knock your socks off, but keeping in mind that it was developed with rather limited means, I think it looks okay. The character designs are great and they animate well. Some of the super moves look absolutely insane and the gameplay never slows down. The stages also look really nice with some excellent detail, but it would have been nice to see a little more animation in them. Overall though, a really nice looking game. The sound design is also really good. The soundtrack is actually really varied and goes from smooth jazz in some stages to speed metal in others and it sounds great. Also you get some nice sound effects and great voice work, especially from the robotic characters. And on the whole I'm really happy with the overall look, sound and feel of Actress again. So, this is a game that I would highly recommend to fighting fans. It features some amazing gameplay and it's a ton of fun. Copies typically go on eBay for about 50 bucks, which I'd be comfortable with spending. On the other hand, Melty Blood Act Cadenza can usually be found for about 15 bucks and it's also really good. So maybe first time Melty Blood players would be more comfortable with that. Either way, I think you'd be a happy camper. This is one group of games that I can recommend playing without hesitation. They're pure fighting goodness. Check it out.